Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this chapter, we would be talking about ethical and social issues in information systems. Now, the issues that we find now is uh, quite numerous. There are lots of issues in the use of information systems. And even now, uh, there's a law on, uh, on IT, which would enable people to sue other people because uh, it seems that uh, ethical issues and social issues that arise from information systems is now very widespread. Now let's see an example here. For instance, about piracy. It seems that uh, in the US alone, uh, piracy of uh, content like uh, piracy of uh, videos, for instance, and so on, uh, would amount to $58 billion a year. And what happens? Because you can easily find everything on the internet. Now, uh, what is the solution there? So now search engines like uh, Google, for instance, use algorithms to uh, prevent piracy. So we can see previously, it was quite easy to find uh, movies, even on YouTube, full uh, movies. Now YouTube would be uh, putting down algorithms to make sure that full versions of a movie could not be accessed. And then people had to cut uh, into short sequences in order to uh, upload things like that. And also uh, trying to find out uh, movies through Google, for instance, it's becoming harder and harder because there are algorithms to avoid that. Also, uh, this is a news network, NBC. They would be also uh, blocking videos that are uploaded unofficially on YouTube. So uh, on one side, you can see that YouTube, for instance, enables everyone to become producers of content, of video content. But of course, also, it enables uh, people to share illegal content, not by the original um, creator of the content, but by other people. Now, there has to be a way to uh, block this to ensure the uh, that, that the uh, creator gets uh, a good amount of recognition. Now, there are many ethical uh, judgments that failed also in businesses. For instance, uh, we have heard about the Enron, for instance, the Enron uh, uh, problem, which it seems they were giving uh, double accounting, uh, doing double accounting. So, what they reported publicly to their uh, shareholders is different from the real accounting uh, results that are in the company. And also there are uh, several other cases like that. Okay, so uh, then we would be taking a look at ethics. What is ethics? Ethics is uh, principles of right and wrong in individuals acting as free moral agents used to make choices to guide their behaviors. So it means that a person uh, would have uh, the ability individually to know whether something is right or wrong. We might, uh, we might call it Nurani, for instance. And then if something uh, would cross the boundaries of those, eth uh, of, of those right and wrong principles, it's a, a violation of ethics. It becomes an ethical issue. Now, uh, we see that the rise of information systems made a lot of changes in society. And then also it threatens distribution of power. For instance, uh, there are many demonstrations all over the world against the, uh, the ruler of a nation, for instance. Those demonstrations are enabled by the use of social media. Uh, that's information systems as well. Also the uh, spread of money. Uh, wealth is not just uh, now held mostly by governments, but also by individuals and enabled by uh, the banking industry, for instance, 
and also the uh, stock exchange industry, which is uh, mostly based on IT as well. And we can see new kinds of crime there. Now, uh, how do we think about ethical, social, and political issues? Now, it's like, uh, for instance, society is uh, a pond. It's calm, but then once a rock is put into it, then there are ripples in the, in the pond. And those ripples are disruptions in society because of the use of information technology. And it seems that the changes in IT far exceeds, it's much more faster than uh, the response that the political and social institutions can make. So uh, for instance, there's a new technology and it takes time for the law, for the regulations to adapt to the new technology. For instance, uh, blockchain, uh, which is used for transferring money uh, to anywhere in the world in a safe manner and without using the services of banks, for instance. So it, uh, it's something really new and it would disrupt the power of the banks. It would even disrupt the power of governments to regulate the transfer of money between citizens and between their citizens with citizens of other countries. And it would take time for regulations to catch up with those changes in uh, technology. Now, here's an interesting diagram which shows that there are five dimensions of ethical and social issues. The first one is information rights and obligations. And then you have property rights and obligations, system quality, quality of life, and accountability and control. Now at the heart of it is information technology and systems. And you can see uh, this circle, this concentric circles uh, at the lower end, at the individual level, if there's a violation of these five dimensions, then it would be an ethical issue. If there's a violation at the society level, it would become a social issue. And if there's a violation at the uh, state level or policy level among these five dimensions, then it would be a political issue. So uh, let's take a look at this uh, perspective with a more detailed view. We can see here the five moral dimensions. And how come uh, those moral dimensions matter? Why uh, do ethical, social, and political issues arise because of IT? First, the doubling of computer power. Every one and a half years, computing power doubles. And then there's a dependency among organizations to use computer systems. If not, they would be losing against the competition. There's a dependency. And that dependency could become a problem. For instance, what if a system fails? What if uh, there's a hacking into the system? What if uh, there's a ransom made based on those systems? And then declining data storage cost. Before you had to choose what kind of data do you want to store, do you want to save in your computer. Now you can just save everything, including you can easily save videos. And then eventually you can save all the uh, transfers, all the dialogues, all the communications uh, that's done through the internet. And that's what companies like uh, Google, for instance, it is doing because they have to accommodate so many communications among their users. And then uh, they would be able to just store everything until it is needed to be used. Not just uh, choosing, but everything could be stored. And then networking. Uh, you, uh, you can use a network anywhere in the world. And then eventually 
you can distribute any content easily. Uh, if you have a, a, a content, a movie, for instance, that you got, you can just copy it, upload it, and then you can uh, share it to your friends. So that's uh, networking. And these changes in technology uh, could result in uh, ethical, social, and political issues. Also profiling. Profiling is uh, like stereotyping. So getting information from different sources of data about a certain individual, and then trying to figure out the profile of that individual. So let's say that person is a lecturer. Uh, that person uh, likes this kinds of uh, content. That person likes to buy uh, this kind of shirt, this kinds of, uh, of property and so on. That's also NORA, non-obvious relationship awareness. We uh, look at that later on. And then everyone is using mobile phones. So it's so easy to track people. We could easily know where people are residing and where they are going. Now this is NORA, non-obvious relationship awareness. For instance, here you can see different sources of data from uh, the police system, from a store transaction system, or from an ATM, for instance, uh, telephone records, calls, texts that are made, uh, maybe email if it's hacked, and then uh, the other systems that are connected to, to the company, for instance, human resources systems, all those could be extracted and put into one database. And using these data sources, you could find out relationships that are not obvious. Relationship, uh, if, for instance, if there's a crime or there's a demonstration or there's some other event uh, and a person is identified, you can easily identify the network of that uh, person or you can easily identify the behavior of that person or the transaction that that person has been doing. And uh, then the system would be alerting uh, the agencies that are relevant. For instance, alerting the police, for instance, or alerting the intelligence agency. If it's done for good purposes, that's fine. It might be fine, but there, it, there, could, be, uh, there could be violations of privacy, actually. Uh, it would be even more scarier if it's used for uh, unofficial purposes, even for doing crime. Now here's an uh, interesting example, Edward Snowden. So Edward Snowden uh, was a contractor working for the National Security Agency of the United States. And then uh, he found out that the NSA was doing uh, mass surveillance. So everyone in the United States and some also in other parts of the world were uh, recorded. Their communications were recorded and so on. Not just for a specific person that is related to a crime, but the whole population, whether or not they're related to a crime or not, uh, was surveilled, was recorded. Now that becomes a large issue when uh, Edward Snowden reported it uh, to the world. And then it becomes an issue whether actually he's a hero of uh, privacy or a traitor to the country. That's an, an interesting case that uh, you could look into as well. Now here, we would be uh, thinking about how to do an ethical analysis. So there are four basic concepts of ethical analysis first responsibility, meaning that uh, you have a person that does something, has to accept that every action that that person does, every decision that that person makes, uh, he has an obligation to be responsible for those decisions. If he decides to, uh, uh, let's say, not bring uh, an ID card, an, 
uh, a, a, a vehicle ID card when he's going uh, driving a car. That's his decision. But uh, if there's something, there's a problem with the police, then he's responsible to, uh, for that. Accountability. If there's uh, a problem that occurs, then uh, we have to be able to track who is responsible. That's accountability. And then liability. Liability would mean that uh, if harm is done, for instance, if a company or a person uh, loses a job opportunity, for instance, because of an issue in social media, then that person uh, that loses the opportunity could sue in court the person who defamed him, who said lies about him. That's liability. And due process, there are rules in how the law works. And then uh, going through the courts, there's a judge. And then uh, if you are not uh, satisfied the results of the court, then you could go to a higher court. So that's due process. Now here, we would be uh, focusing on something that's very useful in trying to take a look at ethical issues and social and political issues as well. It's the five-step ethical analysis. What you have to do first is you have to find out what the facts are. Let's say, for instance, uh, Facebook. You have to describe that uh, Facebook is useful. A lot of people uses it. And then uh, you can also uh, describe that uh, Facebook uses the data from its members to, uh, to send ads, advertisements to them. It also, for instance, uh, uses the pictures that their members upload for marketing purposes. And there's an instance where uh, Facebook claims that everything uploaded on their site becomes the property of Facebook. So uh, describe the facts like that. And then the second one is define the conflict or dilemma and identify the higher order values involved. So what's the dilemma? The dilemma is people need Facebook. But in order to be able to use the facility, they need to uh, somewhat open up to the world to, uh, to give data and information and share the information, even private information, uh, to Facebook because they want to share something to their friends. That's the dilemma. But it's free. Uh, people can use the uh, Facebook platform uh, for selling products. It's free to use, but then uh, they have to, uh, actually they're, they're paying it with their privacy because they're giving data to Facebook. Who are the stakeholders? Stakeholders are people that have an interest in the problem. So the stakeholders might be Facebook itself, the users of Facebook, uh, the uh, community in large, uh, the authorities, because uh, uh, let's say the uh, Department of Taxes, because they should be able to tax Facebook, but they can't because uh, there's no uh, real uh, subscription model, for instance, that they can uh, they can uh, take the tax from, and and so on. So those are the stakeholders. And then what are the options that you can take? The options meaning how do you uh, take care of the problem. The problem is about privacy. It's about violation of privacy. And then the options, let's say one option is to ban Facebook. Another one is uh, to make clear that Facebook has to, uh, has to, uh, could not share the private, uh, the, the private information of its users, for instance. Or the third one might be just to let it go as uh, as normal without uh, without uh, trying to regulate Facebook. Now the fifth one would be the potential consequences of the options. 
So the first option is banning Facebook. So people need a platform for uh, exchanging ideas, for selling things. So is there any substitute? Uh, the, uh, so a large part of uh, communication in the country might be stopped if uh, people don't use Facebook, Facebook anymore. Uh, there might have to be an alternative like what China is doing. They have their own social media system. They have their own search engine. But would other countries do the same thing? Because the uh, benefit of the internet is about uh, networking with other countries, not just making one internal, uh, internal internet for just that one country, if you ban it. If you allow it, then uh, privacy then of course becomes an issue. The government would not get any taxes from Facebook and so on. So uh, these consequences of the options in number four. So this is the five-step ethical analysis. Now here are candidates of ethical principles. Here, if you remember, you have to identify the higher order values involved. Okay, so <clears throat> for the conflict or dilemma, let's take a look. The golden rule, uh, do unto others as would you would have them do it unto you. If you want to be treated fairly, you need to treat other people fairly. Okay, is it fair to, uh, to use the information from other people uh, in exchange for uh, the facilities that, that Google, uh, that, that Facebook gives, for instance? If it's not right for everyone to take, it's not right for anyone. So, uh, for instance, uh, like alcohol, if alcohol is prohibited, even in one, uh, for one person, then no one is allowed uh, to, to drink alcohol, for instance, or uh, discard this discuss rule of change. If something can, is not allowed to do once, you can't do it uh, repeatedly. The utilitarian principle, uh, take the action that achieves the higher or greater value. For instance, in the conditions of darurat, maybe things that were uh, previously not allowed, in that condition, it might be allowed. Risk of person principle. Uh, this is like uh, manfaat and mudarat. So take the action that produces the least harm or potential cost. And the last one, ethical no free lunch rule. So there would be always something that you have to give in exchange. In this case, it seems that the uh, Facebook case would be in line with this, no free lunch. It seems that it's free to use Facebook, but actually it's not because you have to sell your privacy to Facebook or just give your privacy to Facebook. And then they would be using it for advertisement purposes. And then you can see here, uh, here are some more information on uh, the five dimensions of, uh, of ethical, social, and political issues. Information rights, and then here, this is about the use of big data that we have seen and so on. And we will uh, see more of it uh, later on. Okay. So that's the first part of this uh, chapter. Thank you and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.